Way back of you back to Memorial Stadium here in Berkeley. Here come the town California Golden Bears. And it is, a, it is a hungry California Golden Bear team that shows up today to play the Arizona State Sun Devils. Well, take a look at our Haas Avocado kickoff. Whether you're tailgating at the stadium or watching at home, kick off your day with Haas Avocados. You might want to keep your hands over that barbecue today because it's chilly here. And even though it doesn't get that bitter kind of cold that you get in the Midwest, it's that damp kind of cold that blows in off the bay. And it's going to be a cold, overcast, dull kind of day. Let's go to the field right now. Rebecca Harlow has caught up with California coach Jeff Tedford. Rebecca. Thanks, Barry. Coach, redemption, the buzzword all week long. What can we expect in a bounce back win for you guys today if you can get it? A lot of energy, a lot of heart. Um, we're playing a good football team today, no question about it. But our guys are ready to go. ASU brings a great passing game. How do you slow them down? Well, we got to get a pass rush, and we got to make sure that we cover everything and tackle well. If they catch the ball, we got to make sure we keep them in front of us. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. So that's Jeff Tetford, the California coach. Jeff said that he had never been in a locker room behind 42 to nothing as he was last last week to USC. We asked him, "What did you say to your kids?" He said. Get your chin up, get your chest out, and compete. And at the very least, they did do that. Dennis Erickson on the other sideline, coming off a bye week and a road win, and that bodes well. Well, that's exactly what Arizona State needed. They needed to get a victory on the road to stay alive in a very competitive Pac-10 this year. And this is a really skilled Arizona State team. Two very athletic teams right now playing in this game. And it's going to be interesting to see how this one plays out because both have a good shot. California won the toss. They have deferred. They want the ball in the second half. So ASU will get it first. Giorgio Tavecchio left puts it away. Short kick and is headed for Bolden at the 8-yard line. Comes back to 15-20. A little gap. The 30 flag comes down at the 40-yard line. 45. Midfield. But I believe this is going to come back. Steve Williams made the stop. 44 yard return, but. <laughs> holding penalty, and that's gonna bury the Sun Devils deep in their own territory to start things. Larry Farina is our referee today. Stephen Threet's gonna be the quarterback. They run a a version of a hurry up offense too. their offense kind of like Northwestern's offense a little like that a little bit of Oregon in there they move the football very well in the passing game and three getting better and better every week starting to work through his progressions in a very professional type of way they're happy with what they've seen from him and he's the leader of the football team they will start with Cameron Marshall at a running back spot three wide outs they begin just short of their own 15 yard line no huddle offense. They'll get up to, they don't run it quite as quickly as Oregon would, but they make you stay honest. And defensively, California almost exclusively will go with a nickel defense that is bringing a fifth defensive back in and taking out one of the linebackers. Well, they certainly have to do that because there is an embarrassment of skill players on this Arizona State team, and they're pretty well balanced. They could really hurt you. And already, a little discussion here. Also, apparently, a little microphone problem with referee Larry Farina. I don't know what this is all about. The officials are huddling. Stephen Threet's ready to go with his offense. And apparently, the problem is a communication with the replay booth upstairs. I want to make sure all the bells and whistles are working before we have the first snap of the game. Just eight seconds into this game. It is overcast, although it does not look right now like there's a huge threat of rain. Let's take a look at the starting lineup so we have a moment. Brought to you by Phillips Televisions. And Garth Gerhardt, the key to that offensive line. Very much a team leader for the Sun Devils. We look at the backs and receivers. They will shuttle a whole bunch of both all day long. Three going to put it up on first down. Has all day to throw it. Looks deep. Under throws it. It is tipped, and that comes down into the hands of Simpson. And Simpson will take it all the way to the 38-yard line, right off the fingertips of Steve Williams, who looked for all the world as though he had a pick. 
Steve Williams had a pick. Three had Terrell Robinson wide open. You see underneath, but goes for the deeper route. Simpson had position. But Steve Williams, goodness me, had the interception in the first play from the scrimmage. Lucky break for the devil. Jeff Tetrick's got to be thinking, here we go again. Give this time to Marshall very much. He got about a yard. Mike Muhammad in on the tackle for the Cal Bears. And we expect to see a lot more of Muhammad today than we did last week when he had a little bit of a different assignment against USC. Now it's Kyle Middlebrooks who lines up in the backfield. And he goes in motion, empty backfield on second down and nine. Street straight back, steps up, throws, got a man, and dropped by Jamal Miles at the 10-yard line. Defensively for the California Golden Bears, presented by Phillips Televisions. Here's the way they will come to the dance. And of course, Cameron Jordan at a defensive end position, an outstanding player. Browner, we might not see a lot of today because, as we mentioned, it will be in a nickel defense quite a lot. Hagan did not get to start. Williams starts ahead of him. Third down and nine. Middlebrook's in motion. So again, an empty backfield. Five man rush. Three looking for the sideline. And a one handed grab by Simpson and a first down at the 15 yard line. So we've had a tip ball, a drop ball, and a one-handed catch. Reed wasn't afraid to throw that football. Mark Anthony versus Simpson on the edge. Reed knows where he wants to go right away. Puts the ball up, a little underthrown, and that's tough to defend for Mark Anthony. But great concentration and body control by Simpson, hauling that in with one hand. He's had two great catches here in the first drive. I'll say, a skate of 26 on that one. And here's Marshall, nothing doing. Marshall is stopped. After being about a yard, he might have gotten two yards out of it. Watch this grab by Simpson. T.J. Simpson hauling it in. He's got Mark Anthony right on top of him. Again, tough to defend that. It's tough to catch a ball with one hand, especially when it that's deep. So now ASU in the red zone, and they, they just have not been that effective when they've been in the red zone. That's part of the spread. Just 15 touchdowns and 32 red zone opportunities this year. Deontre Lewis in the backfield now. Everybody in the paddle. Three throws. Ball is caught about the 10 yard line by Taylor. Pickup of about four, maybe five. We'll give him five yards. It'll be second down and five. The ball just inside the California 11 yard line. The ball's been flapping all over the place. You see that? Deflection right there. Good job by Kerry Taylor, who leads the team in receptions. Just pulling it down and making a positive gain out of it. Big third down here. Third down and about five. Three straight back. And a man. Now he rolls away from pressure. Throws, and it is not the way. Incomplete. Chris Conte defending. Conte coming off a huge game last week against USC despite the blowout loss. Good pressure on three. He had Aaron Flugrad wide open. Michael Kendricks, the pressure off the edge. One of those linebackers that comes all the time in this 3-4 defense run by Clancy Kendrick as Cal's new defensive coordinator. This will be a 28-yard effort for Weber. Just 9 of 14 this year. And he gets that one through and not by much. So the Sun Devils take an early lead. Two big plays. And once again, the inability to score a touchdown in the red zone, and that's got to be of some concern for Weber. Watch this kick again. It wasn't all that pretty. Thomas Weber, a senior and a Lou Groza Award winner in 2007, knocks that one through. It did. I'll tell you, that hooked right after it went through, though, and it didn't look nearly as perfect from our angle as it did on that replay. Weber will take it, however. Just trying to get his confidence back. Eight plays, 75 yards, took two minutes, 46 seconds. Now the Bears will have it for the first time. Weber will do the kicking. And he will be kicking to Keenan Allen. And Easy Sofella. That's Allen right there. 
couple of guys who could really scoop instead. Allen playing at near 100%, really for the first time since California played Colorado. And he's one of the more exciting young receivers in the nation. Big guy, 6'3", 195 pounds, big target for Kevin Riley. I expect we will see more of him. Turn to 35 yards by Keenan Allen. And the Bears with great field position to start things. Oliver Aaron made what might have been a saving tackle. So Kevin Riley, the fifth year senior, will lead the Cal Bears. And I think he has to come up big today, too. You have to have good to excellent quarterback play at this conference to play with consistency. And Riley is an embattled player, no doubt, but Pac 10's active leader among quarterbacks and wins with 18 and touchdown passes with 47. He's been at it a long time. Bears start the trips left. Quick toss to Allen. Allen with a couple of blockers. Midfield 45, still on his feet to about the 42 yard line. Maybe a couple of yards short of the first down, a pickup of eight. Let's take a look at how Cal will come to the dance offensively, presented by Phillips Televisions. Guarnero back in the starting position, although we expect to see Dominic Gallus in the center spot a lot as well today. And we talked about Shane Vereen. Cap gets a start at fullback ahead of Eric Stevens. Allen and Miller, the tight end. Second down and two. And a pitch to Vereen. Vereen trying to get outside and does. 40, 35. 33-yard line. You know, he doesn't look all that quick, but he gets to that edge in a hurry. Great job by the fullback in this situation. Eric Stevens, you see him lined up right there, and watch the block he makes on the edge. He's playing with a broken hand. You see that big Q-tip on his right hand. Does a good job clearing things out for the veteran Vereen who gets to the edge. Calvin comes to the near side. And now in motion comes Keenan Allen. First down at the 31. Pressure comes. Riley steps up. Looks long. And Jones, Jones really kind of ran a hitch. And I think Riley thought he was going to the post, or rather to the uh, flag. Defensively for Arizona State, presented by Phillips Television, and it is a very good defense. Lawrence Guy, one of the premier down linemen in America. Onieli getting a start today. Munns gets to start in the middle ahead of Perfect, although Perfect is in the game right now. And a couple of changes in corner. Immobile gets a start today. Just on a draw play. Vereen, nothing good. Stood straight up by Jamar Jarrett before he could get started. Now the Bears in a third and long situation. There's no doubt that this is a very skilled Arizona State defensive team. Montez Perfect is not the whole story. Omar Bolden, a big time player at corner. Lawrence Guy, a big time player up front. Nice play there by Jamar Jarrett. There's Montez. Man, is he a violent player. He really is, and when we refer to him as being as good or maybe not so good as he wanted to be, mean, he can self-destruct. He has a lot of personal foul penalties. That's the part of his game he has to get under control. Here's a little screen for Allen. Allen to the 30, head down, close to a first out, but short by about two yards. It'll be at the 22-yard line, and the Bears will try for a field goal here. Brandon McGee and Max Tabak on the stop. Tavecchio, six of nine this year, 40 yards his longest, and this one will be just outside of 40 yards. We'll call it 41. Only made, had one field goal attempt in his last two games. And this one is perfect. So the Bears put three on the board, as did the Sun Devils, and with 9.32 for men to be played here in the first quarter, we are tied. At three, we're coming back. We got a pretty good look at Alcatraz, and if you think it's cold here at Strawberry Canyon, how'd you like to be out there? <laughs> it gets cold on that bay above that murky water. 
Tied at three, 932 remaining to be played. Each team with a field goal on its first possession. And now, Tavecchio will be kicking to Kyle Middlebrooks. He's averaged 30 yards per return, and it's not going to be him. It's going to be Taylor at the 10 to the 20. 25 30. Across the 30 to about the 33 yard line. All right, Pete, let's talk about the Chrysler keys to the game. First of all, for Arizona State. Well, they have to play fast, as is their style in this new offense, but they have to be under control because their pace can get on top of them. And we talked about it in the open. Stopping Shane Marine is the key to beating Cal Marine with one nice run already in the game. So the Devils will start at their own 34-yard line. Three at the quarterback. Lewis is the running back. This is Lewis. And Lewis will get across the 35, close to 37. Picked up close to four yards. We'll call it three. Let's go back to our Chrysler keys to victory for California. Well, California has got to recover. And you heard Jeff Tedford talking to Rebecca Harlow before the game. They have to create their own energy. They have to have some better feelings than they did last week at the Coliseum. And Kevin Riley, frankly, has got to play better. He's got to be accurate down the field, throwing the football. they got to loosen him up with the run game. Lewis again on second down, this time just a couple. And it's going to be third down and about four. DeAndre Lewis. True freshman out of Norco, California, 5'10", 189-pound guy, really starting to feel his way in this Arizona State run game. And he is a future star in the Pac-10, much like Keenan Allen, the wide receiver for Cal. You're going to see a lot of this kid before his career is over. We played for Garth Gerhardt's dad at Norco. Three out of an empty backfield. Steps up, felt the rush, throws, got a man. Caught this time by Flugrad. Flugrad back after being off for a couple of weeks and a gain of 17. A great job by Aaron Flugrad recognizing that his quarterback, Steven Threat, was in trouble. Turned around, showed him his numbers. Threat was able to thread it in there. Nice play. First down. As they get right back to the line of scrimmage, snap it again. You give this time to Marshall. And Marshall will be stopped at about the 42 yard line of the Bears. Mike Muhammad on the tackle, a gain of three. Nice solid play between two good Pac-10 performers. Cameron Marshall, the running back, and Mike Mohammed, very sure tackler. Does a good job there because Cameron Marshall gets by that tackle. And he's still running. Now Put a hurt Lewis. on him a little bit there. Yeah. DeAndre Lewis back in the ball game and running back. Second down and six. Flew grad in motion. Give it to Lewis. And Lewis will get inside the 40-yard line. Cameron Jordan stuck it pretty good. There's a lot of pretty good defenders on this Cal team. Mike Muhammad shows up a lot. Michael Kendricks, but Cameron Jordan is the one that all the opposing Pac-10 coaches talk about. Just a really good-looking player with a great deal of strength and speed. Good feet, too. Third down and five now. A good play here early in this ball game for the Sundowns. They said Lewis in motion out of the backfield, so an empty backfield. Bears show blitz, and they come with a blitz up the hill. Three thrown long. Man fell down, pick is made. Beautiful pick that time by Kendrick. And Kendrick has the first turnover of the ball game. And that's a linebacker making that play. There's a lot of cornerbacks all over the country that can't make that play. Steven Three found the mismatch. He had DeAndre Lewis against the linebacker out there on the edge. Lewis seems to fall down. The ball's a little underthrown. But what a great athletic play by Michael Kendricks. Look at this. Concentration, he's got his feet. That's a guy that plays in the box. Good. Big time play by Kendrick. The Bears will have it at their own 16 yard line. Vereen, the tailback, two tight ends for Cal on first down. Give it to Vereen. Vereen starts one way, then comes back. Still escapes. Stays on his feet to the 20, to about the 24 yard line. What an effort by Shane Vereen. What a run. Colin Parker hit him. Brandon McGee comes in with a big hit. We heard it all the way up here. Marine trying to feel his way in the zone. Big hit by McGee, but he doesn't wrap him up. And then Marine just does what he knows how to do. He gets on the edge and moves the ball up the field. Now that's not a first down run. That would be the best run Marine's had all year. I'll tell you what. Picked up just about eight yards. It'll be second down a long two. Got to wrap him up. Straight back, throws underneath, catch made this time by Miller. He breaks a tackle, gets it up to the 30-yard line, first down there. 
Well, Jeff Tedford talked about playing with passion, and certainly his team is doing that right now. Anthony Miller, the guy coming into this game, only has six receptions, and he was a highly touted tight end. Jeff Tedford said they have to call more plays for the tight end, make him the number one read, and Anthony Miller was that. On that play, there you see the Cal defense, two excellent linebackers, Mike Muhammad and Hendricks, talking it over. Three down the pipe. First down right at the 30-yard line. So Fele in the ball game now. Bears will run a Wildcat. They're not in that right now. Play fake this time. Riley Rolls goes underneath for Sofelli who can't hang on. Might have let him just a little bit. It was Will Cap, the fullback, the intended receiver. And Riley might have let him just a hair too much. Will Cap is the backup fullback. And when you're throwing it to a fullback, it's got to be right between the numbers. Eric Stevens is the starting fullback, but he showed you earlier he's got that big Q-tip on his right arm with a broken ham. They weren't going to throw him the ball, so they put Cap in the game, and they let him too far. Second down and 10, right at the 30-yard line. Bears go out of the eye formation this time. Give to Vereen. Vereen cuts, or rather, Sofelli cuts it back and gets to about the 33-yard line. It'll be third and seven. First and ten line is brought to you by Phillips Televisions. Now Marine comes back, so Fele leaves. Sun Devils number one in the conference in third down defense. They allow less than 30% conversions. And the Bears right now looking at a third, oh, third and six. Steps up, throws long, and overthrows everybody. Ross was the intended receiver, and he was well defended by Musahan Irivor, getting a start. Retro freshman out of Upland, California. Well, that's one of the keys to the game. Accurate downfield throwing. Kevin Riley throwing into a lot of coverage there and overthrowing him anyway. So now Brian Anger will come on. We have two of the great punters. Not only in the Pac-10 Conference, but in the country. Anger, number eight in the country. ASU punter Trevor Hankins, number one in the country. Kicking to Miles. He kicks it away from Miles, drives this one pretty good. Miles runs up, chases it, gets it all the way back in the six-yard line, and is dropped right at the bottom of the 10. Great coverage, great punt. DJ Campbell makes the stop. 53-yard punt, minus two on the return. We're tied at three. Welcome back. Let's go down to Rebecca Harlow now with the story of a guy who seems to have found a home. Rebecca. That's right, Barry. Well, ever since the days of Rudy Carpenter a couple years ago, ASU's been searching for that quarterback to step up, be a leader. They found that guy in Stephen Threet. But for him, it has been quite a journey. He's logged time in the ACC, the Big Ten, and finally the Pac-10, which he calls home. He's putting up career numbers this year. And, guys, he also has a 387 GPA. Yeah, pretty impressive, isn't it? Running a very powerful offense here. Right up the gut this time is Lewis. And Lewis gets him out of the Marshall. And Marshall gets about four on first down. Now, Barry, we've seen three twice this season against Oregon. And now Cal, his timing and accuracy lacking a little bit today, as it was a little bit in our Oregon game. He had five turnovers versus Oregon, one today. Plus Cal's Steve Williams dropped one in the first series. Second down and six. Give it to Marshall again. And nothing doing this time. First man to him was DeAndre Coleman. And then he had a little help from his friends. Derek Hill there. for the first down, but let's see about the flag. A lot of discussion yeah, so far. Awesome. 
Here's Larry Farina to tell us. Encroachment, offense, number four, five yard penalty, replay third down. The offense encroached. They called it on Aaron Flugram. Seems like a nice guy. Wouldn't get him as anybody who would encroach. Very interesting. Bottom line is it will back the Sun Devils up short of their own 10 yard line. Sun Devils have been averaging eight penalties a game. This was their second of this game. Third down now and 11. Great screen over three. Marshall will come down. Pretty elaborate setup for the screen, a fake to Aaron Flugrad, which would have been a fire screen out on the perimeter. They had Cameron Marshall, and the offensive line was moving pretty good. Looked like it set up well, but Marshall fell down, and Freed overthrew him anyway. Yeah, it wasn't very pretty. Trevor Hankins, who leads the nation in punting, averaging 48 and a half yards a punt, trying to get his team out of a hole here. Jeremy Ross stands at about the 45-yard line. Hankins, line drive kick. Ross might have a chance at the 44. Ross starts the outside. Midfield, 45, 40, 35. To the 30 and tripped up as he crosses the 30-yard line. Bontez perfect with a saving tackle. So a 46-yard punt, but it was a line drive, causing a 27-yard return for Jeremy Ross. Tied at three and will be back. We are tied at three, just under three minutes remaining. Bears have had great field position this whole game. Watch this last punt return. Started with a line drive kick, and then... Well, you see Conte blocking. There ain't hanging down there, blocking on Omar Bolden, the corner. Excuse me. Eddie Elder, the safety, just getting pushed out of bounds, and Ross is almost off to the races. Montez perfect. It's a piece of it. A little swing this time for Vereen, and Vereen has no place to go. Dropped at the 30-yard line, about lost a yard. Some devils think they got the football, but the officials don't seem to agree. Montez perfect. I mean, you talked about this guy. He he is everywhere, and he has the ability to be a big, big-time player. And you, you ask any coach about him, they use terms like Montez. Personal foul, oh, face oh. mask, defense, number seven. Half the distance in the goal, and yeah. automatic and first that's down. That's the downside. Although I think this one, I think this one was incidental. I did see it happen. He got a good piece of Vereen here. Perfect reacting to the swing pass. Comes in, has a chance, and reaches out and gets a hold of the face mask of Vereen, and he knew it right away. And it, it does seem like incidental contact. Those things happen pretty fast, but he turned Vereen all the way around, and the penalty is justified. Yeah, it is justified. It's not one of the. What, what he's done is made some not smart penalties. That one doesn't fall into that category. Ball at the 14-yard line for the Bears, and they might get a freebie here. Vereen inside the 10, gets it all the way down to about the 7-yard line. Lawrence Guy and Jamar Robinson both jumped. Hard count by Riley. So now we'll see what the Bears decide to do here. They're going to take the play. No, they'll take the penalty. Offside, defense, five-yard penalty, replay first down. Well, that is one of the advantages of having a guy like Kevin Riley. You see the penalties and the yards, but Kevin Riley, a senior, very experienced, most experienced quarterback in the Pac-10, he can get up to the line of scrimmage and really use a hard count. The other quarterback in the Pac-10 that's very good at that hard count is Andrew Luck down the road at Stanford, and he's got a loud voice in the line of scrimmage. They're in the Wildcat right now. With Vereen. And here is Vereen. And he didn't have any place to go. Now he does. To the 10 to the 5. Touchdown Bears. Vereen just showing great patience. And when he saw that little break, he went. You see Vereen clap his hands. The snap is there. And it's just a zone play. He does a great job of setting up the block of Eric Stevens, his fullback, and then getting right to the edge. Again, experience from this California Bears offense. 
paying high dividends. That was a big time play by a big time player. Tavecchio's try for point is up and good. The Bears lead it by seven. 205 remaining to be played first quarter. And a point of 10. Arizona State three. Bears lead it by seven. This is their version of the Wildcat. And Shane Marine was the guy who took it in. Well, here's Marine right behind the center. You're going to see him clap his hands and wait for the ball. Eric Stevens, the fullback there, is going to come around with that big thing on his hand. Does a good job walling off Lawrence Guy. Nice blocking from Keenan Allen, the freshman on the edge and wide receiver. Look at him cracking back on Omar Bolden. Just a nice, experienced play by Cal. It wasn't there right off the bat, but Marine's patience, like you said, Mary, a big-time player making a big-time play. A touchdown tied Shane Green for number 10 on Cal's all time scoring list. Tied him with Sean Dawkins. This is going to be Middlebrooks. He averages over 30 yards of return. Four yard line. Right up the gut. He comes tripped up as he crossed the 25 through about the 28 by Michael Kendricks. Calling that name a lot today. Very active player and makes a lot of tackles out there and really on Stephen Green now to calm this offense down and, and get it working. Olazoni, the new. Offensive coordinator for Arizona State really feels like they have what it takes. They certainly do personnel-wise, but just getting all on the same page, especially when you run a version of the hurry-up, is not an easy thing. And they've looked a little out of sync so far this afternoon. So far they have. Lewis is the running back. Freak straight back in trouble. Steps up. And he's going to run and not get anywhere. Maybe got a yard. Mike Muhammad made sure he didn't go any further. And it was Ernest Owusu who put the big push on originally for the Bears. Three trying to get to the sideline to protect himself, saw he couldn't get there and really did the smart thing, even though it looked awkward because he's 6'5", 240, just curled up, got underneath Mike Muhammad before he could put a hit on. Second down and nine. Lewis goes in motion again. Three straight back, three-man rush. Three throws and throws it away. And the Bears that time just dropped everybody into coverage. Bears are asking for a grounding call here. Here's Cameron Jordan. Pretty good protection. He comes from all over the field. Never really got his hand on the ground. That's Evan Finkenberg blocking him. And then, hey, yeah, get an extra hit on him. Mike Marcis. I don't know where Threat was throwing the football there. He had DeAndre Lewis open on a hitch route and just kind of left him there. Now it's third and nine. He looks very out of sorts right now. He does. He goes to an empty backfield. Bears that time only rushed three, dropped eight into coverage. This time they've come with a four-man rush. Three hit as he throws and threw it behind his attended receiver, Mike Willie. So again, a good job by the California defense. Sean Katus was coming hard on a blitz. Safety blitz from Katus, and he's a guy who's a very good tackler. See him on the edge coming right next to Cameron Jordan. He takes an inside route. Jordan beats Finkenberg. And the pocket collapses on Steven Three. John Katus is a guy that missed a lot of the spring, missed a lot of fall practice, and is just now rounding into form. And he got the start today. Made a big play right there. So again, Hank gets the punt. Again, a line drive kick. And Ross is going to let this one go, and it will take pretty good bounce and go out of bounds inside the 30 yard line about the 29 a 42 yard kick. Take a look at our Pac-10 passionate moment presented by Bank of the West and you got to be a passionate fan to sit up there and watch a game especially on a day like today where it could rain. Could be a little mud involved up on Tightwad Hill today. Not a bad view though. That's great. You see the San Francisco Bay behind it. There's the history of Tightwad Hill. Man made they dug it out. Started in 1924, and everybody's welcome, but you can't wear Stanford colors. No, no, no. Off the red shirt. Green again with a very nice individual effort that time. I really like the way he sets his blocks up. Well, it's just part of the patience of being an older running back in the Pac-10. He's a junior, but he's had a great deal of experience, played alongside Javid Best. They always have a great tailback at Cal, and you see the Leaders in rushing in the Pac-10. Those are three 
big time players obviously the Michael James Heisman candidate for one of the best teams in the country the Oregon Ducks Jonathan Franklin tough runner and green blitz comes and Riley gets flushed now he throws it down the field and there's nobody there Brandon McGee was coming on a blitz Riley can see that one coming that's a good job by Kevin Riley to get rid of the ball again the experience and McGee doing a good job with a second effort getting to the waist of Kevin Riley and forcing him to throw the ball away Arizona State in a much better position here in a third down doing better with better field position on their D very physical defense very strong defense third and five now Bears 0 for 3 in third down conversion Go empty again. Four man rush. And quick screen this time for Safield. And he will get a first down at about the 37 yard line. DC Safele on the reception. What a great move by the little guy, the sophomore, EC Safeli, catching the ball and turning out, using the Arizona State defense and getting underneath all of them. He's listed at 5'7, Barry, but. He's pretty small. Yeah, he is. <laughs> I don't know if he's 5'7", but he's a heck of a running back. And with that, we're going to reach the end of the first quarter of play, and a lot of action in this first quarter. Bears lead at 10 to 3. Each team with a field goal on its first possession. Significantly, California has had very good field position, unlike last week. That's the difference right now. Bears by 7, 10 to 3. We're coming back to Strawberry Canyon here on the University of California campus at Berkeley after this. We prepare to start the second quarter. What a view that is from high on Taiwan Hill. Here's some of the numbers from the first quarter, Pete. Well, Arizona State not able to get that run game going. And got to say, Cal has certainly come out more focused and urgent than when we saw him last week at USC, trailing 42 to nothing at half. Here's Vereen again, starts one way, comes back the other way. Not this time, Brandon McGee wraps him up. For no game. Sparky the Sun Devil hoping that they can get it going defensively. You know, Jeff Tedford took a little criticism for leaving his starters in for the second half against USC. Cal outscored USC 14 to 6 in that second half. And now they're playing confident here versus ASU. I believe Tedford did that because he needed some kind of positive spin going out of that game and say they won the second half because it was really ugly in the first half. Yeah, sure was. Playing much better today. Well, he has much better field position. Quick toss down. 45 down about the 42 yard line. Nice block by Marvin Jones to get Allen in the open. Well, Cal is blocking well inside and on the perimeter. Good job getting the hands down of Jamar Jarrett. He couldn't bat that pass down. And Ian Allen's a long strider and getting healthier and healthier every week since he hurt his ankle. Three catches, 32 yards for Allen. He got a lot of help on that one from Jones. Play fake this time, Riley going up. Riley with all day, steps up. Now he throws, and throws it away. Good coverage that time by the Sun Devils. And Riley just had no place to throw the football. Yeah, they have. Here's the Wildcat. No, I beg your pardon. He's now going to shift into the shotgun. And they give this to Safele. And Safele will pick up about six, maybe seven. Montez perfect on the stop. Time now for Phillips Television's game break. Let's check in for the first time. Hey, you got to like the way Auburn is playing. And Newton, of course, getting, making a lot of noise right now. Some people feel the leading contender for the ice control. They're in love with Gene Chiswick now on the planes. And Cam Newton is everything Terrell Pryor isn't right now. He's playing perfect. Roddy rolls out, throws. Caught by Ross, the 10-yard line out of bounds to six. Max Tabak defending a big rush coming that time from the outside by Gerald Munns. Gerald Munns flying. And Kevin Riley and 
talked about experience in the face of that rush. Riley on the move, delivering the ball perfectly. Accurate downfield throwing is what Cal needs. And that was very well done. You see him right on the same page with Jeremy Ross, the senior, who hauls it in. And Cal's threatening again at the five yard line. First and goal there. Green time now. And to give this to Vereen. Vereen stutter steps, gets about a yard. Stopped by Shelly Lyons. Montez perfect getting into it there. It's Dominic Gallus. Let's see if we can see what happened. There's number seven. Gallus comes off and does a good job of fighting to the second level. That's a good battle between two good athletes. Like a little swing on the part of Perfect also. <laughs> Riley this time to pass. Throws to the end zone. Caught. Touchdown Bears. Keenan Allen on the reception for the score. Good patience, never takes his eyes off the freshman. Throws it into double coverage. Will cap the fullback also in the area, but it slides right through the D. And Keenan Allen pulls it down. An excellent freshman wide receiver is Keenan Allen, and that's his fifth touchdown of the season. Catching the ball, he's got one running at two. <laughs> Try for point now to Vecchio. And it's blocked. And this can wind up being a point, but it is not going to be. Laquan Lewis blocked it. We'll see if that has any effect on this football game. Good job by the big 6 7 sophomore tight end, Spencer Ladner, preventing two points. So, with 11.46 remaining in the half, the Bears lead it. 11.46 remaining first half. Bears have now stretched it out to a 16 to 3 lead with a blocked extra point. But be the Pac-10 as we know it going away at the end of this year. It'll now be the Pac-12. Teams being added, the Utah team, and of course the Colorado Buffalo. So the Utes and the Buffalo will enter the Pac-10 next year. We have now Commissioner Larry Scott announcing this week the division for football north and south. And it will be all the teams north of Los Angeles, that is to say California, Stanford, the two Oregons and the two Washingtons in one division, two Southern California teams, the two new teams and the two Arizonas in the Southern version. That was Laquan Lewis stopped at about the 23-yard line. Here's a way to look. And you see the way the divisions shake out. Of course, a lot of argument, a lot of passionate argument about how it was going to be divided up. Pat Hayden, USC's new athletic director, very vocal to keep the California, Stanford, USC, UCLA, California rivalries intact, and they will play each other every year. So the way it kind of shakes out is pretty good for everybody. I think everybody's pretty happy with that, and it's going to be exciting to see how it works on the field. Neither division will be a walk in the park. This is Middlebrooks. And Middlebrooks caught from behind, and you're not going to see that very often, especially by a 283 pound defensive lineman like Cameron Jordan. Oh, he can really run. And he got out there to the edge and put his body on Middlebrooks. Middlebrooks only 5'8, 172 pounds. A guy like that gets his hands on you. There's not a lot of hope for you. Uh, Clancy Pendergast, the new defensive coordinator for Cal called Jordan, a dancing bear. Been going to play in the NFL for a lot of years. He should know. He coached in the NFL for a long time. Three straight back this time. And he runs out of time and is dragged down. First sack of the ball game and a big one it was by the Bears. D.J. Holt coming up from a backer spot to get the sack. And now the Sun Devils all the way back at their own 14-yard line looking at a third and 20. D.J. Holt getting a nice push with Cameron Jordan, the entire Arizona State offensive line. Who is playing a little better this year. They've been very in battle the last couple of years. Getting pushed back into three. Three really having a struggle so far today. Throws this time and the catch is made well short of the first down by Kerry Taylor. 
And again, the Sun Devils will have to give it up. You know, this is the Sun Devils' third straight road game. They played at Oregon State and lost a tight one, and then they bounced back to win at Washington. But now after a bye week, it wasn't expected that the Devils would start so slow here in Berkeley. Well, they've not, when they next play at home, they will have been gone for a month. And this time, Hankins juggles the ball. Fortunately, the Bears had a return on. Big bounce for Ross. Ross slips the first tackle and is going to be surrounded and down as he crossed the 30 yard line. Chevy Lyons makes the stop at about the 32. That's where the Bears will start when we come back. We lead at 16 to 3. 9.48 remaining first half. We welcome you back to Strawberry Canyon. What a terrific view it is from all around this stadium. Just a perfect facility. Barry Tompkins, Petros Papadakis, Rebecca Harlow telling you about it. Bears take over with a give to Vereen on first down. Not much. Might have gotten a yard. Kevin Riley really doing what we and the coaching staff and everybody in this stadium felt that he had to do today, and that is have an effective passing day so far. 8 of 13, 84 yards. Kind of made a career plan against Arizona State. Last year, he was 27 to 44 for 351 yards. Two touchdowns, no picks. Second down and nine. And this time, they're in the Wildcat. It's Vereen. And Vereen on a little bit of a draw play. Look out. Vereen splits the defenders, gets it close to midfield. Pick up a 15. And again, Vereen just being very patient, sets his blocks, and goes. But E.C. Safeli is usually the guy that runs a Wildcat. But you hear that clap. Wants the ball, and that play was designed to go right, but he takes it back left. And Clint Floyd makes a saving tackle, and that one was going for many more yards. And Vereen knew it. I love to hear that clap. Eight carries, 45 yards, and a touchdown so far today for Vereen. Riley play fake and go up on first down. Got time looking for it all. Got Jones out there. Vecchio converts, and the Bears take a commanding 23-3 lead. But of course, this past week, the BCS made its first pronouncements of the year, and uh, computers say number one, Oklahoma, six up, none down. 20th time they've been so ranked by the BCS. Number two in the BCS, the Oregon Ducks, they did nothing to hurt themselves Thursday night, did they? They are a hurricane offensively. So much fun to watch it. I don't think they're beatable at home. At Boise State, and, and it's unfortunate they may just be the odd man out again. Now they're going to hang in there, but I do think it's going to take a two-loss team from a major conference like LSU had in 2007. You see TCU at number five and Utah at number nine. Those two play each other later in the year. If TCU wins that game, they conceivably can move up. And remember, there's only one non-BCS berth. Boise State could conceivably be out of the whole thing. Well, we'll see how it shakes out. There's still a lot of time left. And watch out for Auburn as they climb up. The world in the SEC, they're an exciting football team. And that was an exciting play by Marvin Jones. They needed to play like more of a veteran and slow down a little bit. And he certainly did that. Showed a lot of patience and concentration bringing that pass in. This kick is going to be handled by Lewis. Lewis back to 10 to 15 to the 20 yard line, spins across the 30 and is stopped as he does. Laquan Lewis on a pretty good return. So far, the California offense playing very much like it didn't play last week. Well, there's the Wildcat. You see the patience of Shane Marine doing a great job catching the edge, lots of nice blocks. They just seem to have come out with a great focus in this game. Kevin Riley sliding it into Keenan Allen. And then 
Big play, play, taking a shot downfield. Touchdown we just saw from Marvin Jones. So the Sun Devils, who have been unable to get on track offensively, quick toss out of the backfield to Lewis. And Lewis across the 35 to about the 36 yard line. Good first down yardage. Pickup of about five, Josh Hill on the tackle for the Bears. Well, Arizona State needs to find themselves in more of a manageable situation here. They can't be giving up negative yards like they have been, and that was a pretty successful first down play for them. Give them a gain of four, second and six. And hand off this time to Lewis, and Lewis gets a little room, but is cracked by Sean Catoose, short of the first down, it'll be third and short. Well, we were told Sean Catoose was gonna play a lot more this week. Big hit that time on the freshman. But still a much more manageable third down situation now for the Sun Devils. They need some positive things to happen for them offensively. They're going to measure this to see. I'm quite sure it's short, but they'll measure it to see just how short. Stretch it out, and uh, he's that much short. All the way to the heel of the official. It's almost a yard. Third down, just about a yard. Two tight ends in the game now for the Sun Devils. Contre Lewis is the running back. Give it to Lewis. Lewis starts outside. I don't know. Cracked by Sean Catoose again. Big time play. And when he hits it, you're not going any further. Well, he came unblocked off the edge. Yandre Lewis, just a little tentative in attacking the line of scrimmage, sort of stopped his feet before he could get in there. There you're going to see him. Sean Catoose. They're going to go here on fourth down. They're starting to have the punt return team on. But they are going to go. They did get everybody lined up properly. Now whistles blow. And the Bears have called a timeout. Probably a good timeout. Make sure they have the right personnel on the field. Lewis actually lost a little bit of yardage on that play. So it's fourth down. And really just over a yard to go when we come back. 7.04 remaining when we come back. We'll take it to our College Football Saturday studio for a preview of our Geico halftime. All right, thanks, Darren. We'll look forward to that. So after that timeout, the Sun Devils have decided to bring on the punting unit. Hankins will hit this one at the 31, drives it pretty good. Ross, all the way back, will let it hit at the 10-yard line, and it skips into the end zone, 58 yards. Hankins probably would have had, rather had about 56. Well, stopping a state there. Was Hit. big for Cal. They're playing great football, and you look at what they've done. There's the game summary so far. Presented by Direct TV. Let's see what they've done at home this year. I mean, they are very comfortable here. They've won all three games. Their roller coaster season continues. Real high highs, like scoring over 50 against Colorado and dominating UCLA, mixed in with real low lows, blowout losses at Nevada and at USC. Looks like the home game is the key for them. I guess it is. Unfortunately, can't play your whole schedule at home. Vereen lost the yard on first down. And again, it's Vontaze Burfin, who is right in his grill. Here's the way it's gone for Jeff Tedford's Bears. You can see they beat an outman UC Davis team. But Colorado has gotten a little bit better as the season's gone on, and they got thumped here in Berkeley. And then we were at the UCLA game here, and that was a whooping. Well, Cal came out very similarly to the way they've come out in the first half of this game, with a sense of purpose. Then you see the struggles on the road. Look out, McGee wrapping up. Riley came in unblocked and nails Riley all the way back to the 11-yard line. Brandon McGee, a junior, came right here. He's gonna come unblocked. Kareem was the hot read and that ball had to come out. Kevin Riley holding it just a little bit too long. ASU has forced 10 or more plays of zero or negative yards. Very aggressive defense in each game this year, and they averaged 10 such plays per game all of last year, too. I do 
know that. Here's a give to Vereen. Vereen trying to get to the outside, and he does. He crosses the 20 yard line to about the 22. Yeah, there's so many times where he doesn't look like he can get to the edge, and yet he always does. Does a good job of stopping his feet, waiting, getting people to commit to him, and then getting to the edge. But it'll be fourth down, and the Bears will have to punt it away. That's exactly what the Devils needed at this point of the game. Jamal Miles will be the deep man to receive Anger's punt. Anger drove one the first time, 58 yarder. It's this one, a little shorter twisting kick, and it takes a sideways hop and goes out of bounds to the 43-yard line. Bounce well for the Sun Devils, only 36 yards. Let's go to the sideline. More on Shane Vereen from Rebecca Harlock. Yes, that's right, guys. A whole lot of excitement coming from Shane Green and the rest of the Cal team behind me, loving their offensive numbers. Well, I caught up with Shane and asked him, what's the most rewarding part about being a running back at Cal? And he said, it's the accountability. It's the respect that you have to have when you come into this program. When you take a look at the history, you want to be like these guys. You want to put up numbers like Job at Best. It makes you work hard each and every day. He said that's what drives him the history. First down here for the Sun Devils and a swing out of the backfield. Marshall, plenty of room to have a first down at the Bears' 45-yard line. Yeah, great legacy of running backs here in Berkeley, and Shane Vereen and Javid Best are still very good friends, and the Lions have a bye week, and there's Javid right there. Javid Best has already gone Detroit on everybody, wearing a Detroit Tigers hat. Javid Best, just a great back, and the lineage here at Cal is unreal. Give straight ahead this time to Marshall. Marshall inside the 30, all the way to about the 28-yard line before Josh Hill can run him down. A pickup of 16, and all of a sudden the Sun Devil offense has got a wake-up call. But deep into the first half, finally the Sun Devils defensively and offensively starting to do some things. They pour some punt, get Marshall going on a sweet pass, and now up the middle, and it looks like Noel Bazzoni, offensive coordinator for the Devils, got to go to Green throws over the middle, catch is made by T.J. Simpson. Be a pickup of about seven. T.J. Simpson pretty active in this game with a few catches already. Usually a deep threat that time, hooking up inside the zone there. Second down and about three. Miles comes in motion, give the Marshall again. Marshall this time is stopped as he gets the 20 yard line, about two yards short of the first down by Mike Mohammed. First and 10 line is brought to you by Phillips Televisions. DeAndre Lewis comes into the ball game now to running back spot. Third down and short. Sun Devils only two of eight and third down conversions. This is a big play right here. Huge. Put Lewis in motion, so an empty backfield. Five-man rush for the Bears over the middle, incomplete. And again, Sean Catoose just undressing the intended receiver, who was T.J. Simpson. Cameron Jordan put big pressure on Stephen Three, but he gets the ball away to the man he wanted to get it to, Cameron Marshall. There you see Jordan putting the hit on Three. But how about Catoose? He's been a machine out there today. T.J. Simpson. Yes, he's in. He's putting it on everybody. Weber, 37-yard effort on its way and wide. And the struggles for Weber continue. And Dennis Erickson's facial expression tells you everything you need to know. Bears at their own 20-yard line now. Give the green on first down. Nothing. Got about a yard. Stacked up in the middle of the line that time. Remember, Barry, that Cal receives the second-half kickoff. Arizona State's defense has got to hold strong here, struggling offensively. And a lot of that has to do with Cal's defense playing with a great sense of purpose. That guy right there. High amount of anger. And John Catoose, who's not been playing a great deal 
this season, getting the start, making most of it. Physical tackles all over the field in the backfield and in the second game. It was a draw play this time, and nothing doing again for Vereen. Sun Devil's not fooled for a minute. He lost about a half yard. Again, it's Vontez Burfitt right in his face. Arizona State has called a timeout here. It's a 30-second timeout. Well, FoxSportsArizona.com is your exclusive home for Arizona sports. Join us every Monday at noon for Coach Erickson's press conference. Plus, you can check out Jody Jackson's Jackson 5 fantasy football report. You can get all your local sports coverage only on FoxSportsArizona.com. Dennis Erickson talking to us this week. Told us he feels good about his team in every game down the stretch here, and he does have very talented, very skilled football team. Just didn't seem quite ready to play in this game. Coming out in the first half, Stephen Three playing a little better on that last drive, but still, John Cattus ending everything with a big hit on TJ Simpson, and then Weber misses the field goal. So Arizona State very out of sorts here in the first half. Dennis Erickson, a lot of work to do at halftime, refocusing this team, but this is big defensive third down here for the Devils. It's interesting, I think you talked to many coaches of how their team's gonna play coming on the heels of a bye week. And coaches can never figure it out. Never they don't know. know. There's Riley to throw. Look out. And Riley is dropped by Junior Onyeli. Junior Onyeli is a guy they think is a lot like Elvis Duberville. Not very tall. There he comes right off the edge. And Matt Summers Gavin just whiffs on it. I'll tell you what, 237 left in the half. Arizona State should get pretty good field position here. There's his first career start. Not bad. In the sack in the first half of your first career start on a one-on-one -on -one matchup. Yeah. Freshman out of Denver, Colorado. Sun Devils have called their second time out here, so they only have one remaining. Shane Vereen, of course, the guy we talked about at the beginning of this program. He is not disappointed at all so far today. Well, we said if he didn't have a good game, Cal didn't have a chance. And he's having a good game, and Cal's got more than a chance right now. Running very physically. Always runs with great balance. His feet are always under him. When contact comes, he keeps driving his legs. He has great leverage. He runs through the contact zone. Only 205 pounds, but runs a lot heavier than that. He does. Anger hits this one high. And a fair catch called by Miles. Runs into his own man. And I think they're going to bring this one back. This will not be a touchdown. Ran into his own man, was never able to make the catch. Not sure it was touched by an A State player. Officials talking it over right now. Let's take a look. Laquan Lewis goes right into Miles. Hard to tell from that angle if it was touched. Looked like the ball bounced off the turf. Let's see it again here. This is a better shot. Doesn't look like it hits anybody. I don't think so, unless it hit if the, it, the leg of Taylor. If it did, though, the trajectory of the ball would have changed. The ruling on the field is the ball did not touch the Arizona State player, first down, Arizona State. The crowd doesn't agree with it, but I believe that is the right call. And in many, many ways, all three phases of the game, the Sun Devils have just been shaky. Well, they got an opportunity here. Now they've got a longer field than they would have anticipated. Great seven of 14 for 122 yards. The ruling on the field of touching is being challenged by California. Cal's going to challenge this ruling. Why not? Yeah, they have nothing to lose. There's 227 left. Worst that could happen is it costs you a timeout. You see the contact between Laquan Lewis and Miles.
tough enough to catch a punt when the defense is on you. When your own guy gets a hold of you, it's almost impossible. Yeah, if, it, if it touched at all, it touched Taylor's knee, but I don't think it's going to be conclusive in that one. I beg your pardon, Lewis's knee. I don't think so, huh? Nah, it doesn't look like it. Looks like it hit the ground, but that ball's coming in pretty fast. After further review, the ball did not touch the receiver. First down, Arizona State. Cal is charged with a timeout. So it is as the officials called it. They had it right. ASU came into this game and said, averaging 455 yards of offense in the first half so far today. Just 155 yards, so well below their season's average. And a lot of that has to do with Cal and this sophisticated NFL-style 3-4 defense that Clancy Pendergast, the defensive coordinator, runs. There's always a fourth rusher coming, but you don't know who it is. It could be an inside backer, or an outside backer, or even a safety. So an important possession here. Clock is not a big factor right now. I think they have to get something out of this. Here's a swing. And nothing doing for DeAndre Lewis. He got about two, maybe three yards. Darian Hagan makes the stop. The clock continues to tick down. Gain of three, we'll call it second and seven. Robinson comes in motion this time. Three straight back. Guy runs out of time, steps up. He'll run with the football, trying to get the first down, and he does. And that will stop the clock, at least for the moment. Josh Hill makes the stop for the Bears. Good job by three that time, though. He can run a little bit, but he's 6'5, 240, so it's kind of hard for him to get down. Once again, pressure from Cameron Jordan. Good all over the field. Here comes a five-man rush for the Bears. Three throws. Intercepted by Katus. What a terrific interception. D.J. Holt was coming on a big rush. He was right in the face of three. Three threw it for miles, but a great job by Sean Katus. Here comes the inside linebacker, the junior. Very solid player, D.J. Holt, with a big hit, clean hit. On Stephen Three right into the chest. And look at the athletic play of Sean Katus. This is the tape of a lifetime for him in this first <laughs> half. All the sacks he's made, all the tackles he's made, all the big plays, and then a very athletic interception on Stephen Green, who's really having a rough pass. Sean Catusa Jr., Chicago, Illinois, Hubbard High School, putting on a show here at home. High school quarterback, as a matter of fact. See if the Bears are content to go into where they are. Here's a little bubble screen for Allen. Not going to happen. ASU, very difficult team to run that play against. But it's just very fast. Bears get right back up on the line of scrimmage. Second down, 118 remaining and a half. Riley throws, throws the lob for Allen. And Allen cuts it in. Instead of stepping out of bounds, gains two yards and the clock keeps going. That's a freshman mistake. Cal trying to get the ball moving here, running a no huddle. They're in their two minute drill. Allen needs to take that ball to the sideline, get out of bounds. Third down now, 55 seconds remaining. Riley over the middle, catch made by Vereen. And Vereen will be close to a first down. I think he's going to get it. That will stop the clock. Bears will need about 25 yards, really, to get into legitimate field goal range for Tavecchio. That was Caduceus' fifth career interception. And second among active players in Cal behind Mike Muhammad, seven. Riley throws this time. Jones makes the catch at about the 48-yard line. Colin Parker wraps him up. Now 35 seconds, 34 seconds. Riley again trying to run the hurry up, get everybody set up. 28 seconds remaining here. Riley straight back again, steps up, throws. Catch made by Ross, gets out of bounds with a first down at the 48-yard line. Kevin Riley's getting hot. Starting to make all his throws, running this offense with a lot of efficiency. He's really capable of doing that. I mean, we have seen him do that. And Stephen Three is very capable of doing that as well. We've seen him do that. That's right. However, 
really at this league, this conference, if your quarterback's not going well, they're going to have a hard time going because the offenses are sophisticated. The defenses can really expose you with athleticism. So 20 seconds remaining. The Bears with a first down. They have one timeout remaining. Out of the gun. Ryan throws. Hit as he threw. And Ross had no chance. This is Jamar Jarrett coming with a big push that time. So now 17 ticks remain in the half. Block stop because of the incomplete pass. This Arizona State defense has seemed to settle down as the half has gone on. And they're very deep. They can platoon players in. Linebackers, they have many of them in defensive line. A little thin in the second half. Riley again out of the gun. This time he has time. Steps up, throws long. He's got Jones on the through him. Jones fights for the ball. Seven seconds remaining. Omar Baldwin defending. The ball was underthrown. And Jones did a great job to come back and fight for the ball and win the battle. Man, was that a battle between Omar Bolden and Marvin Jones, two veteran players in the Pac-10. Andy Ludwig, Cal's offensive coordinator, pleading with Marvin Jones, saying he needs to play like more of a veteran, play with more veteran savvy. And part of being a veteran is playing with aggression. Great aggression against a good corner and Omar Bolden. And he's really gotten the best of that matchup all afternoon. Marvin Jones, Jr. out of Fontana, California. Really there for his quarterback. So the Bears have used their last time out here. They have seven seconds left. Now, they can run a play, and if it doesn't go, you throw it out the back of the end zone and then kick the field goal. I'm not sure that's what they'll do. But seven seconds, certainly enough time to throw a play, throw a pass. Here's the route again. Jones on the inside, then kind of switches places with Keenan Allen in the route. Pretty nicely run, one-on-one -on -one coverage on the edge, and Omar Bolden right there, the throw. A little off, very underthrown, and Omar Bolden just outcompeted for the ball by Marvin Jones. So the Bears will have one play, really, seven seconds remaining in the half. This is dangerous. If it's not there, you're going to throw it out of the back of the end zone. They throw to the corner. Did he get it? No. Yes! One official said no. One official said yes. Marvin Jones made the catch. There was a disagreement amongst the officials. I'm sure they'll take a look at this. Right now, the call on the field is touchdown Bears. Well, they go to the hot man, Marvin Jones, throwing the fade route once again against Omar Bolden. I don't know if he got that foot down. Calls it in with one hand. And they haven't asked to review it yet. Now they will. And I'm not sure. It looked to me like he might have had a foot out. Oh, really athletic hitting up there. And that left foot ooh, looks like it came down out of bounds. At least his toes came down out of bounds. That's awful close, though. If that's the only angle they have to look at it, they might not reverse it. What athleticism just getting up there and bringing that ball down. I'll tell you what, he's made three great catches. Well, he's been. Game. Making all the throws, but you can see there his foot clearly out of bounds. And that's the only foot he got down in bounds. You only need one foot in college, but if that foot's halfway out of bounds, that count. And he's still putting on a show. You know what the other thing is? Time has run out in the first half. So if this is reversed, the half would be over. Unless they put time back on the clock, which is possible. Because they didn't wait to declare it a touchdown or not a touchdown. The deep official said no catch. And the official on the goal After further review, said catch. the runner's foot was on the sideline. It's an incomplete pass. Second down at the six yard line. Please put two seconds on the game clock. So they will have time to kick the field. That was a dangerous call, but it was worth a shot. Absolutely. Especially when you have a hot hand like Marvin Jones, Kevin Riley been playing pretty well, and Omar Bolden been getting beat. So they went back to that and almost worked out inches. 
Marvin Jones, we had a chance to talk with him yesterday out of Etiwanda High School, real bright young guy. Good looking dude also. Yeah. Really good young man. Nice, nice young man. Had a good time talking to him. He's very excited about this game to prove himself. So Vecchio's field goal try is up and good, so the Bears get something out of it. And they leave on a high at the half. It is a 26-3 California lead at the end of the first half and a real reversal from what the Bears saw last week when they walked off the field at Southern California behind by 42. Jeff Tedford will have an easier time talking to his team at halftime. All right, let's go down the field right now. Rebecca Harlow's with Jeff Tedford. Rebecca. Coach, you don't get that last TD, but you do get the field goal. I know this is the heart and passion you were looking for. Absolutely. You know, it came out strong. It's a four-quarter game, though. You know Arizona State's going to bring it the second half, and we have to we have to answer that. When you take a look at Arizona State, you've been able to take them out of their rhythm on both sides of the ball. How have you gotten that done? Defense is playing a nice game. We're putting some pressure on the pass, so we're keeping the balls in front of us. Early in the game, they got a couple tip balls that we had great coverage on. We just need to keep it up. Thanks, Coach. All right. Gary. All right, that's Rebecca Harlow. We are at the half, 26 to 3. Let's take you right now to Los Angeles and the Geico Halftime Show with Darren Horton. Welcome to the Geico Halftime Show at the Midpoint in Berkeley, California, where the Gal Bears have been dominant in the first half. Shane Vereen, to do no wrong, thought about left, takes it right, eight yard touchdown, 26 to 3, our score. Again, we're at halftime in Berkeley, California, where the Cal Golden Bears marching band is on the field with about 2,500 high school kids on band day at Memorial Stadium. Again, our score at the break, 26 to show again our score in Berkeley, California, 26 to three. Kevin Riley, he has been sharp in the first half, finds Keenan Allen here, 201 yards passing, two touchdowns again, 26-3. Our score, Arkansas gets the win. Time now to get you back to Berkeley, California, where they're just about ready to kick off the second half again. 26-3, Cal with the lead. This has been the Geico Halftime Show. second half 26 to 3 ball game the Bears over the Sun Devils Barry Tompkins Petros Papadakis Rebecca Harlow also joining us from the field and uh, Pete we were really wondering which bear was going to show up and the one that showed up was the one with teeth they play great at home and Kevin Riley's making some pretty good throws but his receivers are competing and they're really winning a lot of jump balls here's our Geico players to watch it is the two quarterbacks and as you said, Kevin Riley, uh, people going and getting it for him. That's true. Marvin Jones has been great. Steven Three having a tough time. A lot of his throws not on the mark, and he's being pressured a great deal by the Cal defense. And the Bears will get the ball first, but they won the coin toss and deferred the second half, so it's all worked out perfectly for Jeff Tedford so far. Sidewinding kick taken by the short man. And getting it across the 47-yard line was Jared Sparks, he's a tight end, but a tight end with some giddy up. And the ball might have been lost a little bit there, but they do get it back. Rebecca Harlow caught up with Coach Erickson. What do you have to say, Rebecca? Guys, I did. I caught up with Dennis Harris Erickson and asked him how he's going to get back into this ball game. And he said, we're going to keep believing our system. We're not going to change anything. What we need to do is make play after play consistently. He said he told the guys, we're not going to get it all back in one play. We don't want to stretch here. We need to relax. I specifically asked, what did you say to Stephen three after those two interceptions? And he said, I told him just to forget about it. All right, thanks very much, Rebecca. We'll see if the Sun Devils can heed the advice of their coach. Here's Vereen on the street to the edge, to midfield, 45-40, 45 and out of bounds. Mitchell Schwartz, a great block on Max Tabak, and that's what allowed Vereen to pick up 19 yards on the play. Look at Mitchell Schwartz with the block here. And Vereen really able to get to the edge in this situation. 
and he puts on a nice burst of speed all the way out of the field. <laughs> Mitchell Schwartz, that's what they call a pancake. They don't keep track of those in the official stats, but they do in the offensive line room. So a first down at the 32 yard line, 19 yards on first down. Not this time. Speaking of pancakes, Jamar Jarrett coming hard right in the grill of Marie. Big hit by Jarrett, and that's how you tackle a guy. Tackle big is what they say. Tackle with your chest, your face, your arms, and your fingers and feet. Textbook by Jarrett. Empty backfield this time for Riley. Riley throws underneath, catch made by Jones. And Jones will pick up about eight, maybe nine yards. So it'll still be a couple yards short of the first down. Omar Bolden on the tackle. But Jones catching everything, and, and not a lot of them are easy. No, he's really competing for the football in this game, and Riley's been helped out a lot by his receivers. We were talking about it throughout the first half. Marvin Jones, Keenan Allen, Jeremy Ross. Jones in particular winning a lot of jump balls against the excellent corner Omar Bolden. Third down and three now for the Bears. And a give to Vereen again, trying to get to the outside, and he will to the 20 and out of bounds, the 19-yard line with a first down. And the rains have started to come here at Strawberry Canyon, and there is a flag down. So we'll see about this. Eddie Elder had pretty good position to make the play, but couldn't get to the edge faster than Kareem. The hold might have been away from the ball here. And you can see Jeff Tedford getting a few raindrops on him right now. I don't think he's noticing. Though. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense number seven. Half the distance to the goal. Well, again. Dead ball. Personal foul. Defense number 97. That will be added after the first penalty, half the distance of the goal. Well, that's huge, both for Vontez Perfect to grab the face mask for the second time. Here's Perfect. There he is, right there, and Locked he did. Donovan Edwards, and he, he does have his hands up around the face. No question. They Coach. made the call, and he's not happy. They also called Junior O'Neilly for the personal foul. So the Bears will have it deep in Arizona State territory now. And again, a pension for self-destruction, not only for Vontez Burfecht on that play, but for the whole Arizona State defensive unit. And the Arizona State coaching staff incidentally was on the field telling Burfecht, take it easy, just cool it, calm down. He really plays with his hands up around the face of the opponent, and that's gonna get called. Out of the Wildcats, so Fele, not much. In fact, nothing. Here's Vontez Perfect trying to get into position for the Wildcat. That's pretty polite, though. Yeah, he was nice. Just a passionate player. And his, his passion sometimes gets the best of him. That's a six penalty. Bears have not yet been penalized. Now it's raining a little harder here. Out of the Wildcat again, but this time Green. And Green is into the end zone for a touchdown. Just that simple. Two claps, the ball comes, and then it's the front side A gap for Shane Green. Does a good job setting up his blocks like he does in this game throughout the first half. Colin Parker got frozen. Side linebacker and Marine runs right through everybody. Devecchio will try to add the 33rd point. Exactly what Jeff Tedford would have wanted coming out at halftime, getting the ball for the first time, taking it down and scoring a touchdown. Try for point is up and good, and just like that, the Bears have stretched the lead out to 30 points. It's a 33 to 3 ball game, 12 14 remaining, third quarter. We're coming back.
Welcome back to rainy Berkeley, California, where the Cal Bears lead the visitors from Tempe, Arizona, the Arizona State Sun Devils, 33 to three. And we're just getting started here in the second half. DeVecchio will kick it away, kicking to Daquan Lewis and Middlebrooks. This is gonna be Middlebrooks at the two. And he has stopped short of the 20 yard line. The ball is loose. And I believe the Bears have it, still loose, and now Arizona State covers it up back at the five-yard line. Big break for the Sun Devils. The loose pigskin, C.J. C.J. Moncrease forced a fumble. Then the Bears had it, but tried to pick it up and run with it, and that was a mistake. There's Moncrease. Big hit right to the thigh of Middlebrooks, and he's not on the ground. His legs are up in the air. Both guys a little shaken up on that play. And then it was just a mad scramble for the ball in the rain. The Bears had it for a moment, but tried to pick it up and run with it. That was a mistake. There they have it covered. Middlebrooks chopped down. Darian Hagen looked like he was on top of it, but it squirted out of there. Man, chaos. Still 10 to Moncrease. Now he's being helped. And we're going to get, I believe, a quarterback change here as Samson Sakachi will come into the ball game for the Sun Devils. Sakachi can run the football pretty well, has a pretty good arm. Three was not going to get done, and Brock Osweiler only practiced one day this week. Osweiler's not been available for a couple weeks with a sore back, and Sakachi. Kind of a wild man at quarterback. Give it off to Marshall on first down, and Marshall will get him on two, maybe three. Michael Kendricks wraps him up. Sakachi has some experience, started two games last year. There's three. Don't know if he's injured. They seem to be talking to him like he might be a little shaken up. Sakashi will throw for the first time. They'll screen this time to Richardson. And the Bears wrap him up across the 10 yard line at about the 13. Simpson was on the reception. CJ Simpson leading Arizona State in receiving in this football game. Come in with a whole lot of catches, and that's one thing that the Sun Devils have been able to do is turn the ball around in a great deal of skill position guys and receivers. Let's see who Sakachi chooses. On a third down and three. Blitz comes. Pass is good over the middle. Caught this time by Robinson. And Robinson will be stopped, but it will be a first down for the Sun Devils. Well, every first down now means a lot for Arizona State. Rob Robinson knows where the sticks are, just stops, shows his numbers to Sakachi. Nice delivery, and there's Katusa again. He's having a great, great game. Sakachi this time on the give, trying to make that cut, and unable to do so with Marshall. Field getting a little bit slick. Really the first rain of the season here. There's going to be a collision between Marshall and Chris Conti. And that is frustrating as a bat. Sit there, you have a little room in front of you, and you're about to get your legs churning, and you go down. No worse feeling. Well, fumbling is the worst feeling. That's worse. Lost the three in second and 13. There's a blitz again. And Sakachi throws and the ball was batted away, I believe, by Cameron Jordan. Right now the Bears get done on both sides. The rain continues to come straight down and relatively hard. Third down and 13. Sakachi steps up, throws one hop in. Intended for Simpson. And the Devils will have to give it up. 
tough conditions to play under here. It's cold, the rains have started, the ball's probably a little bit slick. And Sakachi coming right off the sideline. Cold, I'm not sure he knew he was coming in to play. There he's talking to his offensive coordinator, Noma Zoni. Even Threets on the sideline with Doc. And that's blocked and recovered for a touchdown by the Bears. Chris Conte blocked it, controlled it, took it in. Complete play. Going from bad to worse for the Sun Devils to see the jubilation on the Cal sideline. Chris Conte, one of the only Bears that played well against USC, almost blocked one against UCLA. That time, does everything. Takes the ball right off the foot of Hankins. Then gets his head around, finds the ball, takes it into the end zone. You said it, Barry. That's a complete play by a complete player. Bear secondary really getting after it today. Tavecchio will try to add the 40th point, and he does. And a look at the scoreboard with 9.56 remaining in the third quarter finds the Bears 40. To the California Golden Bears last week. The California Golden Bears are moving to the Arizona State Sun Devils this week. A complete reversal of form. It's been very different. And Cal has outscored its three home opponents 179 to 20. You see Chris Conti there with the great play. Talking to his head coach Jeff Tedford. Just a Jekyll and Hyde team we've seen at the Golden Bears. And what USC did last week to Cal. Remember Washington beat USC, and this Arizona State team beat Washington. Go figure. What a wild conference. Middlebrooks at the two. Gets the outside, 30, 35, and down to the 38-yard line. Good run back by Middlebrooks, who came in here averaging almost 31. Well, it doesn't end here tonight. Game six of the National League Championship Series. Scene will shift back to Philadelphia, and it's a good thing because the game here will be rained out. The Giants will once again try to clinch the pennant, and the Phillies will try to force a decisive Game 7. Coverage of Game 6 of the NLCS beginning tonight, 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific, only on Fox. Pitch and matchup, Roy Oswalt and Jonathan Sanchez. Oswalt had a pitch and inning in the relief in the ninth inning at AT&T Park. So we'll see what he's got. Meantime, what Cameron Marshall got was about three. Talking about that baseball game, Barry. A lot of San Francisco Giant hats popping up all over the Bay Area, even here in the East Bay. Sakachi remains the quarterback in trouble. Now he runs. He steps up and throws underneath, and he'll be close to a first down. Ball was caught that time by Mike Willie, and we go to the sidelines to Rebecca Harlow. Rebecca. Well, guys, as you can see, three talking to the coaches and a couple of the trainers, the word is coming back to me that he is okay. He is not injured currently, and that the coaches just chose to make a quarterback switch. And here's something you need to know about Sakachi. He's known as every guy's best friend, the vocal leader, someone this team trusts. Yeah, one of a kind guy. Very unusual character, and I mean that really in a positive way. And that. They're going to call it a complete pass. And Marshall takes it all the way down to the 31-yard line. They're going wild on the Cal sideline, gesturing for an incompletion. Sakachi throwing to Cameron Marshall. They do a lot of swing routes in this Arizona State offense, and it's hurt them in the past. They're going to take a look at this. I think this is going to come back. I, they just it's called an it incomplete, incomplete pass, on the yeah. field, and you can tell from that shot right there, the trajectory definitely was a forward pass. Nice run by Marshall, though. Yeah, sure was, but for not. Took that hit for nothing. Well, nothing has gone the way of the Arizona State Sun Devils, including the weather. Every ball has gone to Cal. Every bounce has gone to Cal. And Cal, let's be honest, has played with much more of a sense of urgency much more of a sense of desperation. After being blown out last week, they're making Arizona State look like they did last week on the road at USC. That's absolutely right. I mean, Cal easily could have rolled over, but they've done just the opposite. Lewis on carry across midfield to about the 47 yard line of the Bears. Well, let's see what Samson Sakachi can put together here for this Arizona State offense. Visited camp 
in Arizona State, and Sakachi was a guy that they were talking about, that he had a great camp, and you look at what Cal's done in the last two games. Dennis Erickson used the term Jekyll and Hyde, and that's what it is. I'll say. I don't know which one's Jekyll and which one's Hyde. <laughs> I can't remember either. This time the Bears come on a blitz. Conte chasing Sakachi, who throws, incomplete. Intended for Kerry Taylor. Good coverage once again by Sean Katoos. And right now, let's check in with the Phillips Television's game break. We'll check in with Darren Hart. Yeah, tall order for Washington State today. Oh, without a doubt. And you look at Oregon and what they're doing and Stanford and what they're doing, and they could both represent the Pac-10 and the BCS this year. Hankins hits this one, tries to steer it away from Ross, who makes a fair catch at the seven yard line. Let's see what California's done on the defensive side of the ball today. They've made all the big plays. Well, they've been all over the place. There's the big tackle and end, Cameron Jordan. Big pressure on three the entire game. Michael Kendricks getting to him. Pocket's been collapsing. Can't blame three for all the struggles that he's had. He hasn't had a lot of time to throw the football. Took a big hit there. And Sean Catoose is having a career game. Yeah, playing just great. Conte playing great. Played great last week against USC. Coach complimented him and said, play like this guy played, we're going to be OK. And so far, the Bears have. There's a little confusion. Riley at least turns nothing into something. Brandon McGee made the stop and all the side of Palahola. That'll tell you what you need to know about the weather conditions here. And obviously, some guys who are into camping. Sort of a tent up there near Tidewater Hill. Lean to it. Second down and eight now for the Bears. Motion. They get a draw play to Green, and Green can't get by the first wave this time. Stopped after a game of about two. Brandon McGee makes the tackle. It's going to be third down now for the Bears at about five. See a lot of Giants coming. We were talking about it. A lot of orange around this stadium. Third down five for California now. Blitz comes, Riley throws, catch made by Michael Calvin, a tough catch as Burkett was coming right in Riley's grill. Michael Calvin, really the fourth receiver on this Cal team. Brooks with a little pressure there, and it came from Burkett from the backside. And Calvin able to stretch out and pull that down. And it's Bears first down. Calvin, as you see, Junior out of San Lorenzo. That's just down the road here in the East Bay. Quick pass this time. One up to Keenan Allen. An incomplete pass, and that play might have gone. Uh, he's dangerous on the edge and in the middle because of his size and his long stride. Wide receiver position, really the most improved position on the California team from a year ago. They're all pretty young, except for Jeremy Ross as a senior. They'll have Marvin Jones back next year, Keenan Allen, and Michael Calvin. Second down, 10. Allen comes in motion this time. And it's Vereen out of the Wildcat. And Vereen's going to be cracked. Might have gotten a yard. So not that time, out of the Wildcat with Shane Vereen. The first and 10 line is brought to you by Phillips Televisions. Still a lot of violence and a lot of physical mentality up there within the box. Brandon McGee, Vontez Perfect, guys that played together in high school, Corona Centennial High School, also Shelly Lyons from Corona Centennial High School in Southern California, getting after it and trying to pump up that defense. You know what's happening with Perfect, though? Guys are taunting him now. Guys are trying to get him off his game. Here's the Wildcat again. Only this time, Safile. And Safile is going to be short of the first down by about two yards. Brandon McGee 
runs him down. So the Bears will give it up here. And they'll bring Brian Anger on to do the punting. Done a good job of that so far today. Came into this game number eight in the country. Jamal Miles will be the deep man for the Sun Devils. He's set up right now at about the 24 yard line. And it's blocked. And this could be an Arizona State touchdown. It is picked up and scored by Osahan Irabor. Or Big block. What an athletic play by Colin Parker. I'll say. The linebacker just laying out and getting it with one hand. Usually you put one hand out there. That's a, that's a real stretch. That's a prayer to get it with one hand. And Parker able to do that. And some positive feelings for the Sun Devils. Yeah. Hanger did not get a lot of punts blocked. And he started to move to his right that time. The try for point by Weber is up and good. And it's a 40 to 10 ball game. 440 remaining to be played here in the third quarter, and we're coming back. 40 to 10 ball game now. There's a man who blocked it, and incidentally, it was Oliver Allen who scored the number four on another interesting guy. Here's Rebecca Harlow. Well, guys, Lawrence, guys, certainly the guy with a whole lot of class and integrity. He's getting it done on the field, but also off the field. He's got a lot going for him as well. He's overcome attention deficit disorder and dyslexia to earn a 3.41 GPA earlier this week, named a lot impact trophy quarter finalist. All right, thanks, Rebecca. Here is Keenan Allen, and Allen breaks it to the 40. Midfield, 45 still on his feet. At the 30, he's gone, and a flag comes in. Touchdown, Allen. Let's see about the flag. 96 yards, unless it's coming back. I told you he was a long strider. What a good looking young runner. Keenan Allen is with the ball. Illegal block in the back. Number 31. 10 yard penalty. First down. First California penalty of the game, and it cost Keenan Allen, the freshman. A 96-yard touchdown run. Tyree Ellison, number 31, with the block. You see it there. Flashed at the bottom. Of, there it is, right there. Flashed right at the bottom of the screen. Good-looking run by Keenan Allen. Man. Take another look at it here. We'll get a chance to see the block in the back. There's Tyree Ellison. Coming in right at the end there. Yep. And just a little elbow. And that's enough to draw the flag. Good call. Still the Bears having good field position at the 46 yard line. Here's Safele inside the 45 and the 44. Just a couple. E.C. Cefeli, tiny little guy, just a sophomore. Salt Lake City, Utah, Cottonwood High School. Yep. Same high school as Stanley Havili, the excellent fullback that plays at USC. Havili was a senior there when Cefeli was a freshman. Second down and eight for the Bears now inside the 45-yard line of the Sun Devils. Play fake and a throw underneath, and Ross has this one for Bears inside the 40 to about the 38-yard line. Going to be short of the first down by a couple of yards. Nothing fancy. This little boot. Cal's had great contributions offensively from everybody. Belly, Shane Vereen, Eric Stevens, a fullback, been blocking well. Marvin Jones with some big catches. You see Jeremy Ross, the senior. Keenan Allen, an exciting freshman. And Michael Calvin, the fourth receiver, with a nice catch. On the last drive for Cal. Really have it clicking against a good Arizona State defense. Yeah. Third down, they need about a yard. They might have gotten a freebie on the hard count. So, Philly, 
did not make it as he is really cracked. You know, you talked about how Vontez Burfitt could target somebody. Well, he targeted the little man. Now a late flag. There's. These are probably now going to be. There's a penalty. I'm quite sure against Arizona for encroachment. Arizona State, that is, for encroachment. And then there may be a post-possession penalty. Well, Vontez Perfect is taken out of the game now for the captain and senior, Gerald Munz. There he is. Looks like he got shaken up a little. There was big contact that we heard all the way up here. E.C. Cefeli came underneath Perfect, but Perfect just swallowed him up. There are two fouls on the play. Offside, defense. Dead ball, personal foul, number 55, defense. Both penalties will be assessed. First down. Well, again, just that self-destruction. Man, can he whack you? Did you ever notice how many times helmets fly off when he hits somebody? It happens a great deal, and, and you see the contact, helmet to helmet, right in the hole between Zafeli and Perfect. Personal foul on Jamar Robinson. Perfect on the bench. Jamar Robinson also been taken out of the game. Well, these penalties, now Perfect going to come back into the ballgame. These penalties have just killed. Arizona State, not just in this game, all year long. It's the eighth penalty against them. And a lot of them, you know, are penalties that don't need to be there. So Feli stays in the game at tailback. And here's a reverse to Allen. Split the two defenders, but perfect with a great play. Right now, time for Phillips Television's game break. Let's check in once more with Darren. I'll tell you what, Wazoo is getting a lot better. Much better on the offensive side of the ball. And there's a lot of Pac-10 teams that could do something with Tool, that quarterback. He's a player. Absolutely. And a freshman wide receiver that's really helping him. There's a blitz off the edge and a reverse pass this time to the tight end. Miller and Miller will get this inside the five yard line for California first down. Well, you know, we've been talking about how perfect is a guy who can play out of control. But when he gets his head on straight, is there anybody better? Uh, look at the way he saves this play and just the way he gets going. When he decides to tackle you and leaves his feet, you're going down. And that time the freshman Keenan Allen sees that. But Cal counters with a very nice screen play with some misdirection. Anthony Miller rumbling for a first down. First and goal, Bears at the five yard line. Riley rolls away right into the arms of James Brooks and a big loss on the play. Third sack of the day and that was a big one. All the way back around the 20 yard line. James Brooks was the guy that caught the attention of Andy Ludwig. Cal's offensive coordinator called him a beast. Coming off the edge, didn't buy the fake there. There wasn't much Riley could do. A good job by Kevin Riley just hanging on to the ball. Almost stayed up, but it seemed like Brooks was able to trip him after he kind of slung him down. And that solidified the sack. Nice play by James Brooks. All the way back at the 18-yard line, so a loss of 13. Just the second sack of the season for James Brooks. And used to have a little more production than that. And Riley's going to call a timeout here with 59 ticks remaining here in the third quarter. The rain has subsided a bit. It's still raining, but it's just kind of a heavy mist right now. Next week, in college, it's college football Saturday. We've got a triple header. First, number 14, Oklahoma State, playing well right now against Nebraska, going head-to-head -head with number 22, Kansas State, that 18th-ranked Arizona. We'll take on UCLA in the Rose Bowl. We'll be back there for that one. Then under the lights, Baylor looking to add to the woes of Currently number 19 ranked Texas. They'll probably drop out next week though. The action kicks off 12 Eastern, 9 Pacific, a triple dip right here on these same stations. It's been a crazy year in college football. Coming into the year in particular in the Pac-10, a lot of people didn't know what Oregon was going to be like simply because 
quarterback situation. No Jeremiah Masoli, but Darren Thomas has stepped in and played very well, but very solid. Get better every game, too, I think. Not a lot of people saw Auburn coming, or Michigan State, for that matter. Yeah, they won today, came from behind against Northwestern. Here's the way the Pac-10 looks right now. Oregon with a thumping of UCLA on Thursday night, undefeated in the conference, undefeated overall. Everybody else has at least one loss. Stanford in a battle, as Darren Horton told us, 10 to seven in the second quarter. Swing pass for Allen, flags everywhere. Gregory Smith, I believe, encroached. And this is gonna be another penalty against the Sun Devils. Offside, defense, number 34, five yard penalty. Replay second down. You can see nine penalties now, 72 yards. Kind of stuff that makes coaches gray, or in Dennis Erickson's case, grayer. A State not particularly disciplined on defense in this game for sure. Really not on the same page offensively. One big special teams play, but they gave one up too. Here's the Wildcat with Sofele. Sofele following the fullback this time. Cuts it inside. Ran into his own man as he got to about the eight yard line. Clock ticking down toward the end of the third quarter, and that's going to be the last play of the third quarter as the Bears will let this tick down. Riley just doing what he needs to do, and a, a particularly effective defensive effort, I think, so far by the Cal Bears. Interestingly enough, both punters, these two of the best punters in America, each has had a punt block, and each has resulted in a touchdown for the other team. 40 to 10 at the end of three quarters of play. California Bears putting a hurt right now on the Arizona State Sun Devils. 15 minutes of football left. We're coming back to Strawberry Canyon after this. OP, well, let's take a look at our eHarmony.com stats after three quarters of play. And, uh, you know, they tell you pretty much the story of the game. Well, we knew Shane Marine was going to have to run the ball well for Cal to win the game, and certainly they've done that. And Kevin Riley's been good. He's had some receivers step up for him. Great, great effort by Cal, and great defensive effort by the Golden Bears. Third down and goal now for the Bears. And Riley floats it toward Marine in the end zone. There was contact, but no flag. I don't think that ball was catchable for anybody, Omar Bolden included. Bolden had the best chance at it, if anybody, though. And Giorgio Tavecchio will come on to try to add three more for the Bears. Made a 40 yarder and a 23 yarder so far. This will be 26 yards. Perfect. So the Bears add three more with just underway here in the fourth quarter, seven seconds in. And the scoreboard now shows California 43 and Arizona State 10. Well, just a little bit over an hour from now, game six of the National League Championship Series in baseball as the scene returns to Philadelphia. The Giants once again trying to clinch the pennant while the Phillies will try to force a deciding seventh game. Coverage of game six of the NLCS begins tonight at 7.30. That's what happens when you root for the Philadelphia Phillies in the San Francisco Bay Area. That's not cool. 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific. Josh Hamilton and Cliff Lee got it done for the Texas Rangers. What a nice success story that is. It's great to see them win the way they have. It's great to see them finally in the World Series as a franchise. And it's great to see Nolan Ryan doing his thing. Getting really somebody to root for in baseball. World Series starts on Fox on Wednesday. Can't just dump water on somebody at the stadium. Nope. 
What a difference a week makes, huh? Well, they're definitely more comfortable, this team in particular, playing at home. And A State coming off a bye after a big road win in Washington. Just out of sorts. Tavecchio's kick takes a big hop, skips right by Daquan Lewis. Lewis chases it down at the two yard line. And he's got no place to go. It is dropped inside the one by Darian Hagan. So when it goes bad, it all goes bad for the Sun Devils. Hagan shake it up. And we said out of sorts. And there's really no other way to put it. Juan Lewis. This play ball not once but twice. Not sure what happened to Darian Hagan. It looked like he tweaked something after the tackle was made. And he has not moved. Here's, here's a look. See if you can figure out what happened here. Hagan. Oh, elbow to the head. On the legs. And then kicked in the chest. So his helmet came off. A lot of limbs flying around, especially in the kick game. Caught him in the chest, trying to knock the wind out of him. Looks all right. He'll take a standing eight. Arizona, Arizona State right now, 262 yards below its average per game. First down, nothing. Sakachi so just trying to run a sneak, get a little breathing room for this Sun Devils offense, which had a rough time. Really a rhythm offense, much like Oregon. Obviously, they're different than Oregon, but they work off the first downs and positive plays, but they don't get those. Really hard to run that no huddle and, and get in a rhythm, especially with the quarterback. So Sakachi out of his own end zone, just going to air it out and play in center field for the Bears was Mark Anthony, but even he couldn't catch up to it. Ball was really kind of thrown in no man's land. So it'll be third down. The ball. Just across the one yard line. Sakachi so will hand it off again and wedging his way out to about the three yard line was DeAndre Lewis. The Sun Devils will have to give it up and the Bears will have good field position. Each putter, as we said, has had a punt blocked and returned for a touchdown in this game. No Rock. kicker wants to be there. No. There's play run back here. And you might get one. Line drive again. Ross midfield. 45. Trying to get the outside and cuts it in at the 40. To the 35. At the 30, waits for his blocker, steps over a tackler, and will take it down inside the five-yard line. But they're going to say, I believe, that he might have stepped out back around the 19. Jared Sparks had two good blocks on that return. I believe they're going to say he stepped out of the 19-yard line. We'll find out when we come back. 13-20 left to be played in this game. 43 to 10, California over Arizona State. Petros, let's open up the old Toyota playbook. There it is. This is the Wildcat with Shane Vereen. And you're going to see his route. Shows a lot of patience, a lot of veteran skill. Waits for his blocks to be set up and then takes it around the edge. One of the plays that really got things started for Cal. Jumps front side and then back. Takes it into the end zone. There is no replacement for experience in college football. Absolutely. Here's a reverse this time with Ross, and he's going to walk into the end zone for another California touchdown. <laughs> well, 
Jeff Tedford told us a lot of misdirection, looked for a lot of misdirection. There it was. Well, Kevin Riley has had his struggles as a quarterback this year and in his career at Cal, and really done a good job supplementing that with a lot of screens, a lot of reverses, a lot of around plays, the Wildcat. We've seen some option looks from them. We've seen inside zone. Just a really nice job with Andy Ludwig, the offensive coordinator, of mixing things up on the ground. Tavecchio's try for point is up and good, and Cal's put 50 on the board. 13-13 remain to be played in the ball game. Well, there you see what's happened today. 50 to 10. The California Bears over the Arizona State Sun Devils, and there's still 13 minutes of change to play in this football game. It has been all Bears. Tavecchio to kick it off. Bolden and Middlebrooks, the deep men. Tavecchio hits this one on the ground again. And it's handled by the short man, not very well, but it is handled by the short man. Well, the guy that's rededicating himself to football is Darian Hagan. You saw him make a big play just a moment ago in the end zone. With more on this interesting story, here's Rebecca Harlow. That's right, Barry. After being kicked in the head, Darian Hagan doing just fine down here on the sideline, but he's got a lot to live for. A year ago, back in 2009, he was, had a tough choice ahead of him. He had to decide whether or not he wanted to leave school or go home to his daughter, Kai, who had been diagnosed with a rare form of cancer. He said he chose to stay in school. It was the hardest decision he ever made, but he said she brought him so much strength and perspective in life. And here is a look at Darian Hagan and his daughter, Kayana. She has been cancer-free now and declared in remission. It's a pretty nice family album, isn't it? Sure is. It's been a good player for Cal for a long time. Now a senior out of Los Angeles, California. Pac-10 Player of the Week for defense. A couple of weeks ago for his performance against UCLA. Middlebrooks gets the call on first down. Stopped right at the line of scrimmage by Michael Costanzo, getting some minutes at the down line spot, a down line spot for the Bears. Third down and nine. Again, the Sun Devils offense just very stagnant. Has a lot to do with the Bears, though. Over the middle, the ball is caught, but short of the first down by Mike Willie. Josh Hill defending for the Bears, and Sun Devils will go for it here. Why not? Thirty-second timeout called. Well, coming October 25th to FSN, it's the Dan Patrick Show. You're not going to want to miss exclusive guests, which include high-profile athletes, celebrities, breaking sports news, and unparalleled insider access and pop culture commentary. The Dan Patrick Show it premieres October 25th, nine o'clock Eastern, six Pacific, on FSN. Now they will bring on the punting team and not go for it here in their own territory on fourth down more than a yard. So Hankins will come on once again. I think they were having trouble getting the call out to Samson Sakachi. Understandable, he's been the third string quarterback through the beginning of the season, the third string quarterback, last couple weeks, second. Hankins hits this one pretty good. Ross will let this bounce, and it will hit and barely go into the end zone. He outkicked the coverage that time, 57 yards. And the Bears will start at the 20-yard line. We talked about Shane Vereen at the beginning of the broadcast. He did not disappoint. Well, he played well. He played like a veteran, and they expect him to play that way week in and week out. Didn't play poorly against USC. Had a touchdown, but wasn't really given the opportunity because USC got so far on top of Cal in the game last week. Similar to the way Cal has gotten on top of Arizona State this week, but Vereen able to really get it going in this game in many different ways. 
Brock Manson is now the quarterback for the Cal Bears. And the handoff straight ahead to Sofele. And he gets it across the 25, about the 26. Brock Manson, a guy that a lot of people had very high hopes for when he came into Cal a few years back. 6'5", 232-pound junior. Dallas, Texas. He had really been buried on the depth chart, though. He was playing behind Bo Sweeney until just about a week ago. So really what we have in the game now, two third-string quarterbacks. Yeah. His father, Hans, played tight end at Texas Tech and been around football his whole life. And he really looks the most like a quarterback of all the Cal quarterbacks. Big, long guy, 6'5". Good arm, can throw it. Give it to Safele again. Safele gets a little bit of room, but he has a first down and more across the 35 about the 36-yard line. Took Eddie Elder for a ride that time. That's a little guy taking a bigger guy for a ride. Eight carries, 35 yards now for Safele. Well, we talk all the time about the lineage of California backs, and whenever we start naming them, you always forget one or two. Adam Chinobi Echamandu. That's right. Joe Aikber, Chuck Muncie, Marshawn Lynch, J.J. Arrington, Javid Best. Goes on and on. And you see Safele might be that guy. He might be the next guy behind Shane Marine to put up those big running back numbers. Jeff Tedford just loves it. Jeff this time is to Kovan Dabosky Johnson in the ball game for the first time. He can go too. And Eddie Elder makes the stop, a loss of the yard on the play. You know, you gotta give it up too for the California defense. I mean, this is a team that gave up 42 points in the first half last week. And other than last week and the game against Nevada in which they got jumped early too, this defense has been very, very good. Well, they've had people just come up with big plays in this game and play with more purpose. Mike Muhammad, Michael Kendricks re leading that linebacking core. Cameron George coming off the edge. Chris Conte made some good plays. Sean Cattu's played out of his skull in the first half. They've been very good. Second down 11. Manchin on a pitch to Safele. Nice block, and Safele can't get it to the outside. But boy, he got a good block on that play. And Eddie Elder again makes the stop for the Sun Devils. Elder's been all over the place, a junior out of Sacramento. Now it's third down, and we might see Manchin uh, put the ball up for the first time. Stand the huddle at that time. Now they got seven seconds to get the playoff here. Mansion straight back, straightens up, and throws. A lot of traffic in there. It was intended. For Coleman Edmund. Omar Bolden defending in the Bears will punt. Miles will be the deep man to receive this punt anger. Rain continues to fall here. It's not quite as heavy as it was. He's come after this again. You don't get this one. Anger drives it. All the way back to the 25-yard line. A flag is down and Colin Parker, I think, either ran into the kicker or roughed the kicker, one of the two. He's trying to tell the official that he was blocked into him. Keeps making that motion. Well, we'll see. Parker's number 21. Tries to get it with one hand like he did before and then just comes up underneath. I'm not sure he might have been blocked into him. Running into the kicker, defense. Five-yard penalty will be assessed at the end of the run. So they, Sun Devils will still have the football. The penalty will move them back, however. Tenth penalty so far. Well, we talk about conference ratings. The Sagarin ratings really uh, will tell you the power of each con conference. And right now the Pac-10 atop the heap, number one. The Big 12 is number two. And the SEC, which you might think would be the most powerful conference, not so, according to the Sagarin ratings, they're number three. Uh, it's been a great year for the Pac-10. Seen some lopsided games, we've seen some 
very competitive games, and Oregon sit, sits atop the mountain right now. It's a good look at conference, top to bottom. Wide open, too. I'll say. You know, when we talk, like even Washington State, that was a team I really didn't get a chance to win a conference game going into this season. I think before it's all done, they might get somebody. They're in it with Stanford today. That's Kerry Taylor on the receiving end. Here's the way we stand right now in the Pac-10 Conference. As you see, Arizona, Stanford, Oregon State, Washington, all with just one conference loss. USC two up and two down. And the way they played last week, of course, they looked like a lot better team than that. And Oregon coming down there in a week. LA Memorial Coliseum to take on the Trojans. Should be a good one. So I, think, I still think Stanford's a top 10 team. And, and Washington State's giving them all they want right now down at Stanford. Well, just look at the talent. Nick Foles a little injured right now. We'll see when he comes back for Arizona, but they have a good backup in Matt Scott, Jake Locker, Andrew Luck. Damn. Second down short. This is Morrison on the carry. And he'll get it to about the 29. He'll pick up the first down. Robert Mullins makes the stop. Next year, of course, Pac-10 goes away forever. It'll be the Pac-12. We talked about the Northern Division is the two Bay Area schools, the two Oregons and two Washingtons, the two newcomers to the Pac-12. Colorado and Utah will play in the South with the two Arizona schools, UCLA and USC. Sakachi throwing underneath for Morrison and let him a little too much. Well, they talked about zippering the conference right down the middle. Eventually, they went with the north-south, but they're going to preserve those California rivalries, Stanford, UCLA, USC, and Cal, and put a lot of upset people if they hadn't done that. Those are very old, storied rivalries here in the state of California. And the schools up in Oregon and Washington didn't want to be cut off from the recruiting bed that is California by not being in a division with California schools, so it seems like everybody's going to be happy. Yeah, you can't make everybody happy, but Middlebrooks takes this little swing pass from Sakachi and turns it into another first down for the Sun Devils. I think they're both going to be very competitive divisions. Depends on the year, which one's going to be better. That's right. And whoever has the best record in the division gets to host the conference championship. Sakachi again throws underneath. Again, the catch made this time by Simpson. A couple yards short of the first down. And that first down line is brought to you by Phillips Televisions. Well, Sakachi's got Arizona State moving a little bit. Sakachi 7 of 14, 54 yards now. This time Sakachi on a keeper across midfield to about the 46 yard line and another Sun Devil first down. Sean Katus making sure he didn't get any further than he did. Overall, this game, real setback for ASU offensively and on defense today. Coach Erickson and his offensive coordinator, Noel Mazzoni, were so high on Stephen Threat this week, but maybe Sakachi. Brock Osweiler could get an opportunity in the coming weeks with the way the offense is run in the first half. Tough day for three, just eight of 16, and a couple of picks. Blitz comes off the edge this time. Sakachi is wrapped up by DJ Campbell. Well, the Bears doing everything right in this football game. Jay Campbell disguising the blitz well. Time's up the snap. Sprints in there, and Sakachi never had a chance. Now second down and 20, a loss of 10 on that sack. There's coming the blitz off the edge again. Sakachi throws over the middle, had a man, but could not get it to Aaron Flugrad. So now it'll be third and 20. <laughs> 
Sakachi straight back. Throws underneath a screen for Middlebrooks. And a great job defensively. The ball is loose. It was Jared Price who held on to the receiver and did a really nice job. A loss of a yard on the play, and the ball did come loose, but Sun Devils got it back, but it'll be fourth down. Darius Simmons pulling it off. It's a face mask yeah, there. Yeah, he did. Got away with one, didn't he? Flag didn't come out. Looked like it was a pretty well set up screen, but hard to run down the field when somebody's got a hold of your helmet. Once again, it'll be Hankins to do the punting. And it'll be Jeremy Ross to see what he can do by getting it back. Eighth punt in the ball game. Hankins, another line drive. Ross could have a chance again. Ross to 20, trying to get to the outside. 25, steps over a man and is stopped at about the 29-yard line. On a 37-yard punt, rather, but an 11-yard return. Yeah, we're the Bears. We're coming back 50 to 10, Cal. And we welcome you back to rainy Strawberry Canyon here on the University of California at Berkeley campus. Give this time to Kovan Dabosky Johnson. He gets about four yards, and we'll take you to our studios now for a Phillips television game break with Darren Horton. Wow, that game as advertised. Tie game between LSU and Auburn. Quite frankly, I thought Auburn was a better, much better undefeated team than LSU. Still some time on the planes. Penalty against the Bears is going to move this back to the 19-yard line. Manchin remains the quarterback. Give to Gavosky Johnson, and nothing doing. He's going to be stacked up by Laquan Lewis. And lost about three more. Well, Arizona State. And three, as you can see, he is clearly, I, we believe he had his bell rung, nothing official, but definitely not himself. Not a lot of answers coming from anybody about Stephen Three. He's definitely talking to trainers and doctors. Sakachi was put into the game. Mansion this time, Ooh, gonna throw it, now he's gonna run it. Gets it across the 25, lost the football. It is picked up by the Sun Devils. We're going to take this in for a touchdown. Clint Floyd just kind of took it away from Manchin and takes it in for a score. 26 yards. Manchin switching the ball. And that's another big play by Colin Parker. Yeah, it he was. That big punt block. He's able to slap that ball out. And Floyd picks it up, takes it to the house. Two touchdowns now for the Sun Devils, but still nothing on offense. Yep. One on special teams, one on defense. Can't hang out on the Bears defense, can they? Drive the point is up and good by Weber. It's a 50 to 17 ball game. 428 remaining. 33-point difference between California and Arizona State. Sun Devils have not scored an offensive touchdown. There are two scores coming on a special teams blocked punt and on the fumble recovery. Not a day for the Arizona State O's for sure. No, and they're going to drop to 3-4 and four overall, meaning they'll need to go 4-1 and one over their final five games to finish 7-5 and five and guarantee themselves a bowl bid. Normally, six wins qualifies you for a bowl, but two of Arizona State's wins are against FCS teams, Northern Arizona and Portland State, and only one of those wins counts towards bowl eligibility. So Fele will be the deep man, but the Bears expecting an onside kick here. And they skip the ball towards Sofeli. Takes a funny kind of hop, and Sofeli wisely just falls on it at the 20 yard line. Here is our DirecTV game summary. Six touchdowns by five different players for the Golden Bears. The ASU offense virtually non-existent. They just 
didn't come out with any kind of rhythm or purpose today, seemingly. Well, they wanted to do well. They wanted to get it going, but just couldn't get their rhythm going. And rhythm really is everything when you run a no-huddle offense. You have to get first downs. You have to keep the defense off balance. This didn't happen for them. You saw what the Bears have done at home so far this year. Here's Dubosky Johnson. He'll get about two, maybe three yards on the play. They have played very well at home, I, and I suppose that's the good news because they get Oregon coming here. Well, there's a no-huddle offense that really works. I'll say. <laughs> Oregon's offense is really something to behold because they don't run a whole bunch of plays. And people do know how to defend uh, read option look but it's the rhythm in which they run it and the speed and the pace in which they can execute it that makes it very difficult and with every game darren thomas just gets better to michael james huge heisman trophy candidate right now they're a joy to watch they really are they run a play every 17 seconds and they just wear defenses out and their defense conversely does a great job practicing against that sort of pace and I don't think Oregon minds giving up a few yards defensively here and there because they basically just wait and wait and they force a turnover. They have speed on defense and very opportunistic guys. They're the class of the Pac-10 right now. And no maybe question. maybe the class of the country. I haven't seen anybody play more in the, a more exciting brand of football. No, I love it. They're, they're a joy to watch. And uh, you've talked about Chip Kelly and he's taken a pretty good system that Mike Bellotti put in and has made it even better. There's a handoff to Dubosky Johnson. Now, we talk about Oregon coming here to Berkeley, but before all that happens, the Bears have to make a little trip to Oregon. They have to play it at Corvallis. That's no box of chocolates, and that's a pretty good football team up there, too. And you see the split with Cal, and they've just not been very good on the road, played defense very well in Tucson against Arizona. They're going to have to bring that sort of defense to Oregon State as Ryan Katz continues to improve at the quarterback position for Mike Riley and John Quiz Rogers, along with Shane Marine, one of the great running backs in this conference. We've been talking about Michael James. For me, those are the best three. That should be a good game. Oh, I think so. Anger hits this one, a wobbly kick, a fair catch called by Miles at the 27 yard line. Jeff Tedford uh, says, I'm satisfied, takes the headsets off. I've seen enough with 2.08 remaining in the ball game. Big rebound for Cal. Oh, awesome. Funny game, college football, isn't it? It's really about that day. Sakachi hit as he throws, and it's going to be intercepted by Anthony. Anthony will start back the other way, trying to pick up some blockers. He's the 40, he's the 45, and steps out of bounds. A lot of excitement on the Cal sideline because of a huge block. Costanzo with the block. Michael Costanzo. A crusher on Coyle. Christopher Coyle was really pursuing Anthony. Looked like he was going to get to him. And then Costanzo. Man, a lot of reasons to celebrate. A lot of fun things to look at out there. If you're a California Golden Bear, not so much if you're a Sunday. So how about the last three weeks? for the Cal Bears. They win by 28, they lose by 34, and they win by 33. Schizophrenia? Well, you can say that, and, and you can also say this day and age in college football with the way coaching works and the way schemes work and just the way the first quarter plays out, really about that day, especially in this conference and especially for Cal in this conference. It's, a lot of teams are very comparable talent-wise. You have to say Oregon's probably at least the second most talented team in the conference. USC is perennially the most talented team on the West Coast. And now all that's necessary is for Manchin to take a knee. 
I do want to mention the fact that one player out on the field right now is a guy by the name of Quinn Tedford. Jeff Tedford's son getting some PT here. That's good. Remember these though. So Manchin will take a knee once again, and that should pretty much do it. For this afternoon here at Strawberry Canyon, the Seagulls now can take over the stadium. They've been circling for the last hour. Lots of goodies left over for them. Sun Devils of Arizona State, unfortunately, have to board a bus, then take a two-hour flight south to Phoenix. That will not be a pleasant trip. And for the Cow Bears, redemption. Without a doubt, and just looked like a whole different football team. It was hard to believe after played so well against UCLA here in Strawberry Canyon that they would go down and play so poorly against USC. They had to find some positives in that game in the second half with Kevin Riley, and they did. Came out and played with a great sense of purpose. Now Arizona State has some soul searching to do. All right, let's go to the field right now. Rebecca Harlow is with Shane Vereen. Rebecca. Yep, down here is Shane. He got the job done early and often today. Between the last week's loss and this week's win, have you ever played in two games with this much of an extreme between the two of them? <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about that, and I don't know. But, I mean, that that's the character of this team. We bounced back. Uh, we went down, you know, to USC. We had a had a horrible game, to say the least, and uh, we were able to come out today, um, despite the weather, despite all that adversity, we were able to come back. 91 yards, two touchdowns for you. Of course, you didn't have to play the whole game, but talk about the efficiency from the offense all ball game long. Yeah, exactly. We were able to move the ball. Uh, we were able to move the ball well, and uh, I mean that goes to Kevin Riley doing a great job throwing the ball. The whole line doing a great job protecting. Um, just a great game plan overall. I know you're looking forward to heading up to Oregon State next week. Jack Quiz Rogers matchup. Yeah, definitely. Quiz is a, is a great back, um, and we've had a tough time with OSU uh, the past two, three years. Uh, so it's going to be a good battle. It's going to be a four quarter game. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Barry. All right, thanks, Rebecca, and thanks to Shane Vereen. Uh, wants to be in the broadcast business, and you have an idea that big personality, he's got a real chance. We'll come back, wrap it up after this. Well, P, the Bears back in the bowl picture, and now for ASU, they got to get getting. Yeah, they'll play at home for the first time in a month against Washington State. And Cal's hitting the road, taking on Oregon State. Very difficult to decipher what happened to Arizona State in this game, but Cal certainly came out and put it to them. 50 to 17, the final score. Texas A&M and Kansas coming up next Saturday. It'll be Oak State and Kansas State, Arizona at UCLA, and Baylor at Texas. That's a wrap for us from here at Strawberry Canyon on a misty afternoon for Petros Papadakis and Rebecca Harlow. I'm Barry Tompkins. So long, everybody. Well, P, the Bears back in the bowl picture, and now for ASU, they got to get getting. Yeah, they'll play at home for the first time in a month against Washington State. And Cal's hitting the road, taking on Oregon State. Very difficult to decipher what happened to Arizona State in this game, but Cal certainly came out and put it to them. 50 to 17, the final score. Texas A&M and Kansas coming up next Saturday. It'll be Oak State and Kansas State, Arizona at UCLA, and Baylor at Texas. That's a wrap for us from here at Strawberry Canyon on a misty afternoon for Petros Papadakis and Rebecca Harlow. I'm Barry Tompkins. So long, everybody.